Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the State of Unreal address just ended, and I gotta say, there were some big announcements, but the biggest of all, well, I'll let Tim Sweeney take it from here. Today we're launching Unreal Engine 5.0 to all developers. It's been battle tested in Fortnite Chapter 3, launched last December. So download it today and get started. So I get the impression that Tim may not enjoy doing public speaking, but his announcement is super clear. Unreal Engine 5 is finally here. Now, I've covered Unreal Engine 5 a number of times in this past on this channel, and I'm going to definitely in the future. But in this one, we're going to do a bit of an overview of what the high-level new features in Unreal Engine 5 are to be excited about. And in a follow-up video, I'm going to do hands-on with some of the new uh, demos and technologies announced today, simply because they're still downloading. And you may find that if you update... Um, at Unreal Engine today, you may run into some glitches. Make sure you update the, the launcher first and then have the Unreal update happen and then install the new demos. There's definitely some server hiccups going on, so I will go hands-on in a little bit. But first off, what is new and what is magical about Unreal Engine 5? And there's two features that really stand out, Lumen and Nanite. Now, at the core, Lumen is a global illumination system. It's a way of lighting your world without really caring about the details too much. So what you can do is just place lights in the world. You don't have to bake UV light maps or anything else like that, and it just takes care of it for you. Now, Nanite, you can sort of see the visualization of Nanite in action over here. It is a similar thing, but for dealing with geometry. So you can have really high-resolution models, and you just put them in the world and let Unreal Engine take care of things like streaming in the, the, the vertices and and uh, doing level of detail versions so that it can actually run on your platform of choice. You can throw in as high of polygon count models as you want, and Unreal Engine just sort of takes care of it. So here you can see a scene. There's the visualization of Nanite and Lumen in action, and here it is, real-time rendered shadows and lighting, which obviously you can't see from a still, and also super high polygon uh, models that have been, you know, LOD down to whatever platform makes sense in this case. So Lumen and Nanite are definitely the two marquee features of Unreal Engine 5, but they're not the extent of it. We've also got things like Temporal Super Resolution, a built-in platform independent high quality up-sampling system. Um, so you kind of render at a low resolution version and then upscale it to a higher resolution copy. At the same time, and this might be part of why uh, the next Witcher is ultimately being written with Unreal Engine 5, they worked a lot on world partitioning. So basically you can have different chunks of your world uh, and it will automatically stream them in together. What this allows you to do is in Unreal Engine 5 make massive levels and the world partitioning takes care of it. At the same time, you can also work simultaneously in the same area using the one file per actor and the data layers functionality there. So it's also got added large world coordinates, I believe 64 bit or is double precision 128 bit. Anyways, they're huge. So you can have basically galaxy scale uh, coordinates in your game. So the combination of world partitioning, uh, the tools for uh, multiple artists and um, programmers working together in the scene together, and then the large world coordinates will make it so you can make gigantic open worlds using Unreal Engine. Uh, we've also got additions to the character and animation tools. Again, I'm not gonna get into the, those levels of uh, specifics for detail, but obviously we've got across the board changes. Another area that's really nice is the UI in general for Unreal Engine uh, 5. It's just so much better than Unreal Engine 4. It's going to be hard to ever go back to UE4 after using UE5, but we've also got uh, new features uh, UV editing tools built in, uh, baking and mesh attributes, uh, tool sets being updated. Again, the user interface and the workflow has just been uh, really worked on. So you've got this nice content browser. It's uh, control or command to shift to bring this guy up. You can get access to anything at any time. Otherwise, you've got this nice new streamlined interface. Um, we've got things like uh, Quixel Bridge integration directly inside of Unreal Engine 5. Um, so definitely improvements there. They've got an all new Meta Sounds audio engine, uh, support for procedural audio. Uh, we've got path tracing for uh, DXR support. So if you're into the ray tracing side of things, also improvements to stability performance and feature completeness, a new hair primitive, new eye shader model. Um, and it just kind of keeps going and going. If you want to get into the full details of it, there's, there's a ton of uh, new features in Unreal Engine 5. I've covered them in the past as we've gone. So here you can see again, Loom in global illuminations in action versus not in action and you can get an idea of what the lighting uh, and reflections 
give you. Uh, so uh, Lumen is definitely going to be a bit of a game changer. So again, is Nanite. Those are the two marquee features. But as you can see from the release notes, there is just an absolute ton of functionality in Unreal Engine 5. I covered these as they were doing the previews and the beta releases and so on. Uh, but I'm a, about a third of the way down on the scroll, which is why I'm not going to go into, you know, that level of detail of what Unreal Engine 5 is all about. Let's just say it's a game changer uh, and it is now available. And we just kind of keep going. We keep going, keep going. Another interesting thing that they did in the state of Unreal announcement is they said that uh, Fortnite, the newest version, is actually running on Unreal Engine 5. So this has been dog fooded and battle tested and is considered good to go. Now that wasn't it for announcements though. There are two new projects that are available. Uh, I have these coming down right now. So this one is quite literally installing as we go. I did have some problems with it. Again, make sure you update the hub, update Unreal Engine before you try to open this one. Uh, I got into this weird situation where I thought Unreal Engine 5 was updated, but it technically wasn't yet. Uh, so make sure you update the hub or Unreal Engine 5 isn't going to update yet. But I'm going to do hands-on with the Lyra starter game. Basically, this is a project around the idea of introducing people to Unreal Engine 5, also for building your game on top of the uh, the Lyra starter game. So it is a first-person shooter style game, if you want to check that out. By the way, they also have another one called Stack Obots, uh, which is another kind of the gameplay slice of vertical gameplay uh, to give you an idea of what Unreal Engine 5 features are all about. So this guy is definitely up. As you may notice uh, by the unavailable sign here, this is all going live literally right now. Uh, so you may have some hiccups. It may take the day to get everything working flawlessly. But again, stay tuned. I will do a follow-up video specifically showcasing the Lyra starter game in action. And there was another release today of Swords. Now remember back... Uh, about three or four months ago when they did the whole um, Matrix Awakens demo for Unreal Engine 5. Well, they just released the city sample. And this is uh, basically the playground in which it was set. There's a huge amount of stuff in here. By the way, on the topic of releases, they also did their uh, monthly giveaway for Unreal Engine assets. I did that in an earlier video today. Of course, the Unreal Engine 5 release is really going to overshadow that. But just to be aware, that is out there as well. So this showcases a number of Unreal Engine 5 features, including the world partitioning Nanite Loom. Chaos, which is their physics systems, rule processor, mass AI, Niagara MetaHumans, MetaSounds, and temporal super resolution. Now, MetaHumans uh, was talked about today. No real updates there, but as a way of creating digital humans uh, that are very lifelike. I've covered that in a video in the past. So if you're interested in checking out the city sample, I do have a warning for you. This download is 85 gigabytes in size. And then it's gonna have to compile all the shaders and everything else. So do expect this to take a while. I am going to hopefully get this one downloaded and running so I can showcase it in action as well. But that one's gonna have to run overnight because my computer is going to melt while trying to load that sample. But if you do wanna check it out, it is available now. Uh, you can also get down to the individual aspects of it. So the buildings, the vehicles, and the crowd are available as separate packs. So if you do not want to do an 85 gigabyte download, you can get individual aspects of it available in separate projects. So if you want to get just the buildings, for example, they have been broken into their own um, their own modular set. So you can see all of the various different buildings were used to create this. Those are available as well. Um, and they're licensed, I believe, under the standard Unreal Engine license, which means you can use only with Unreal Engine products, but you can use these commercially if you wish, which is always a very generous thing. But again, Unreal Engine users only. So we've got those two new projects here, the um, the city example broken down into three packs uh, for Unreal Engine. And of course, we've got the a uh, live or starter game, which I will follow up in a follow on video. Once I get Unreal Engine 5 up and running, once I get Lyra up and running, I will get a video out showcasing this guy in action as well. And then finally, just to like add more on top of the announcements, they also launched the dev community. This is available at dev.epicgames.com forward slash community. And there's actually quite a bit to this. I'll, I'll show you from the actual announcement right now. We have been working on a new community site, dev.epicgames.com slash community. The site brings together a number of different community channels and tools to make it easy to find all of our resources in one place. Learning content, forums, questions and answers, and code snippets. The learning section is a centralized, fully open and accessible library of all kinds of courses, tutorials, live streams, and tech talks for you to browse through and read or watch. And what I really like is that anyone can write tutorials and contribute to this library of content through an easy-to-use tutorial editor. 
that lets you freely build up your page using text, image, video and code widgets. If for example you discover how to do amazing procedural animation using Control Rig to add secondary motion to your characters, you can share those learnings with other devs. The Unreal Engine forums have been fully integrated in order to give you a space to showcase your cool projects, discuss things with other devs or to find solutions from others. There is also the Snippet repository to share and store snippets of code such as C++ and Python or text-based assets such as Blueprint, Materials, Metasounds and so on. For example, in the Lyra starter game, one of our devs made a Blueprint setup that measures the running speed of the player and then uses that to drive reactive music via Metasounds. If you have an interesting setup like that, you could simply copy and paste that from the Unreal Editor to the snippets on the site and by doing so, store things you would like to remember, or more importantly, share with others so that they can use your work as a foundation. And lastly, activity is captured and represented through your profile that you can personalize to represent who you are and what you create. So I gotta say, the launch of the dev community came as a surprise, but it sort of makes sense of some of the companies that Epic Games have been buying over the last few months. And it is really gonna be interesting to see if they build a game development community around it. I do like the fact that it does take user submitted content, but that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Some pretty major announcements, but biggest of all, by far and away, Unreal Engine 5 is here. Now stay tuned for some more hands-on content with Unreal Engine 5 once I get everything up and running. And let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.